Brethren, pray the Lord, God is good for another chance. This time in this season, we ask how do we attract God's favor? How do we attract God's eye of attention? How do we attract God's hearing of our prayer that we keep making? Because all through we've been talking about watch and pray, but how do we attract God's attention to the prayers that we make? How do we attract God's hearing of the pleas that we make to him? Because many times we have challenges, we have even good times, but we need to God to hear us, to answer us. So how do we do that? And in Psalms 33, verse 18 to 19, the Bible says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. So this moment we are asking, how do we fear God so that he, I mean, we attract his attention so that he may have his favor upon us so that we can catch the eye of the Lord, so that we can catch the attention of the Lord. Because many times we have done it, we pray, we read, but how do we do it in a way that pleases him? Now, in Psalms 34, verse 10, still the Bible says that the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want anything good. And so we, give, we get this comparison between the lions, you know how they feed themselves in the jungles, wherever they are. But he says young lions may lack something. But those who seek the Lord, those who seek the Lord shall not lack anything good. And so do the following I just want to mention just four things very quickly. One, trust in the Lord and seek his help. That's number one. And it's something that actually maybe we have done all the time, but this is still a reminder to ourselves that seek, trust in the Lord and seek his help persistently and do it insistently. Do not rush to relocate. Keep there. Do you have a line of prayer? Do you have moments of prayer? Do you have times of prayer? Do you have places of prayer? And of course, actually, you may have some corner in your house. You may have some corner in your church. You may have some place where you usually make your prayer. Now, keep trusting God and seek his help. Now, and we're saying do not relocate from there because you may go where God is not. You may relocate to where God is not and don't go to where God has not asked you to go. Do not relocate unless God says so. Persist on. Trust in the Lord and seek his help all the time. See what God told to Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. I want to read it verbatim here. Now what God told Abraham, I mean Isaac, is there was famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land in which I shall tell you. Verse three, dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. You can read on, but the Bible is saying, God tells Isaac, do not relocate. Stay here, stay at the place that I've told you and here, 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 I will bless you. There are some people who do, who tend to relocate, to move positions, to move locations. Now, God told Isaac, do not go to Egypt. Now, God's favor remained on Isaac there, 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 where he was. 
And so, what do we do? What are we saying? Do not move until God tells you. Persist and ask for his help there. Now, you know, Isaac had been in fellowship with God. You see, his father Abraham had showed him the way and he knew the way. So he sought God's help and God told him that I'm going to help you where you are. Now, you man, I want to ask you, do not relocate. Of course, actually, there are some men who are relocating from their homes because their, their wives have not given birth to children. So I say, no, don't relocate. Maybe I want to jump away from this job. It is not paying enough. Hey, do not relocate because actually you might be you might relocate when God actually is going to bless you in that particular place there. There are some people who have relocated, who have moved, and they keep moving and moving and moving. We have seen men and women that are not satisfied in their marriages. They're not satisfied at their workplaces because they keep relocating. But the point we're making is do not hurry into things because others are doing them. Do not hurry into things because others are doing them. Do them because God wishes you to do them. That's the comparison that I'm making here for you. Point number two, whatever you do for you to attract God's favor, whatever you do, work at it heartily to attract God's favor. Whatever you do. And the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 23 to 24, Paul writes and says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord, not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. Can you imagine? You receive an inheritance as your reward. Now, what are we saying here in this point number two? We are saying put in an effort, be willing to work at it. Now, to receive God's favor, yes, be in that place that God has positioned you, that God wants you to be, because you want to do it God's way, now work heartily. If it is prayer, do it heartily. If you are to work your workplace, do it heartily. Do it with your heart there. Not as for men, but as for God. Now, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, 12, Paul warns those who are unwilling to work. He tells them those who are not willing to work should not even eat. Because lazy people, those that don't want to work, Actually, there is no favor. God is favored and not rest upon them. So be involved at your church. Be involved in your family. Young people in the family, men and women, be involved to attract God's favor. Be involved in God's things. Be involved, my brother. Be involved in church activities. Be involved in Bible study. Be involved in the choir. Be involved and attract God's. Work heartily at it. Even at your workplace, be involved. Do something with your heart in. And sometimes I ask, are you doing this thing with your head on? Now do it with your head on and you will attract God's favor. Now point number three, how to attract God's favor. Something that I want to bring to you is to avoid one. I mean number three, avoid envy. You know, envy is human. Feeling bad about what some other person, what God has endowed with some other person. The way some other person is doing his things or her things. Now, Remember this, what I want to mention to you, that God has enough blessings for everyone. I might have been blessed in one way, and another person is blessed in another way. You might have been blessed in another way. And remember that actually God blesses you, and where you are, what you are, God wants to favor you, to give you his favor according to what you are. So envy is something that God does not desire from his people. And in Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, the Bible says, Thou shalt not covet thy, I mean, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's property, your neighbor's. So, coveting arises from envy, and, and you do wrong things. And when you do wrong things, God's favor runs away from you. So, point number three is avoid envy. You attract to God's favor if you are in you, you as you, you position yourself as you, you work as you, you do your things as you, and depending on God, and become a blessing to another person. Do something to become a blessing to another person. Husband, do something to be a blessing to your wife. Wife, be a blessing to your children. I mean, to everybody, work at it, and we avoid envy, and do everything to bring blessings to another person. And finally, 
maintain the spirit of gratitude. Be thankful. Be thankful to God. And when you give thanks to God, the book of Psalms is full of examples. Psalms, read Psalms, you'll find very many Psalms that are asking us to be gratitude to God, being thankful to God for what he has done. In the morning, thankful. In the evening, thankful. Whatever moment, thankful. For food, thankful. Even the times when you are not okay, thank you, God, that I'm, I have not died. Give thanks to God. And gratitude, the spirit of gratitude attracts God's favor, God's attention, God's eye. And very many people in the Bible have given thanks to God for their situations. Daniel did and he was immensely blessed. And other men and women in the Bible uh, that we read about, Deborah's, I mean, they, those judges, the men that were Jephthah's and all that, actually they were grateful to God, they were grateful to God for what God had done for them. Now, during this season, we are asking ourselves, what do we do? Because actually everything that we do, either by prayer or meditation, reading the Bible, we have to keep asking God to have his touch of favor to rest upon us. And I pray that God's touch of favor rests upon you and that you will keep trusting the Lord and seeking his help all the time. Do not relocate, do not move away, persist on, insist on, like we said sometimes past. And now we're also saying, seek God's help and do not relocate. And Genesis chapter 26 is what I live with you, that actually Isaac got his share and God remained with him because he obeyed God's voice and keep working hard, keep working at it, keeping it there and until God does something for you. Men like Abraham, men like, you know, like Isaac and Jacob, all those men, David and others persisted on and they attracted God's favor. David they did attract God's favor, sinful as he was, but attracted God's favor because he was a man that worked with his heart. Even the dancing in the temple, he was dancing along the way when they were taking the covenant box with his heart. Now, my brother, my sister, may God, who has given us this opportunity, speak to you even more after we have listened to this message, after I wrote it. And may God bless you and watch over you. And our desire is to remain focused, remain reoriented, to serve God now and always, that his favor will rest upon you. I have never forgotten that God, uh, God is favor to rest upon you, like his touch on your head, on your life, and with your family, so that you become a blessing to another person. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <music>